million barrels a day to 260,000, which is uh, more than a 90% drop. Uh, so that has had a devastating effect. And this is the ironic situation for the Iranian people. They are now under more sanctions after they signed a nuclear deal than they were before they signed a nuclear deal. How will the results of this election show up in Iranian conduct? As I understand it, President Rouhani has another year. Doesn't he left in his term? He has roughly one more year left in his term. And what we are seeing now is that after several years with an Iran that was eager to engage the West, obviously they were tough negotiators and no one is saying that they gave up everything the U.S. wanted them to give up. But nevertheless, it was a policy of engagement. We are likely going to see an Iran returning towards something similar to uh, the policies and the approach that they had under President Ahmadinejad. And this, again, was quite predictable. Many of the critics of Trump's move to get out of the nuclear deal said it at the time, that this is going to be the result. We're going to see a weakening of the moderates. We're going to see a strengthening of the conservatives and the strengthening of those in Iran who view the United States least favorably. As you suggest, I mean, we think of the deal first and foremost about development of nuclear weapons, and now the enrichment of uranium has taken back up again. Where does that stand as of now? Do you know? Well, so the Iranians have reduced some of their commitments under that deal. Um, uh, they're not further reducing those, but nevertheless, they have reduced some of those commitments, which means that um, some of the very valuable things that the deal was bringing about um, uh, have been lost. It's not entirely in a scenario in which we can say, look, they're only months away from a nuclear weapon or anything like that, but it's a very negative step and also, again, a very predictable step. We're, we cannot have the expectation that the U.S. can walk out of the deal while expecting those countries to continue to stay in the deal. Um, so the big surprise, frankly, is that the Iranians haven't walked out of the deal altogether. Uh, but that may very well be the reality a year from now when Rouhani is out of office. Uh, and again, this, in my view, is making America less safe and is an indication as to why uh, Trump's um, uh, breach of the deal ultimately really was a disservice to U.S. national security. There were a variety of reports of um, civil unrest, some demonstrations, particularly among the younger people in Iran, having to do with the economic situation, even some deaths reportedly at the hands of Iranian officials before there was the altercation that ultimately led up to the, the missile attack on Qasem Soleimani. Where does the street, if you can get a sense of that, where does the street right now in Iran, and particularly the younger people? Well, I mean, folks are tremendously upset and disappointed because the economic situation has been made so much worse, which is, of course, uh, not just because of the sanctions, but also because of economic mismanagement by the government, corruption. But I think it's also important to keep one thing in mind. Corruption and mismanagement has been um, uh, prevalent in Iran throughout the last 40 years. Uh, this economic downturn that we're seeing right now is directly a result of the sanctions, made more effective by the corruption, but nevertheless. Because you cannot cut down a country's oil exports from 2.1 million barrels to 260,000 and not have a, the expectation that it will negatively affect the economy. It obviously will. So uh, corruption and mismanagement alone has never brought about this level of economic misery that they're experiencing today. That is a direct result of the sanctions. The question is, who are they blaming? And the conservatives have cleverly been able to make sure that most of the anger is directed both at Trump but also at the Rouhani government mm -hmm. and saying the mistake Rouhani did in the first place was mm -hmm. to think that you actually could have a deal with the United States. Mm -hmm. Dr. Parsi, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. That's Dr. Trita Parsi of Quincy Council. And now it's time to find out what's going on with Bloomberg Business Week. It's not here in New York. It's out in Los Angeles. Every time I look up, uh, Jason Kelly is out in Los Angeles. I think he's buying a house in Malibu, as best I understand. What are you doing, Jason? Well, you know, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble out here in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of interesting things going on out here, as you know, but all the attention in the market is really on the virus, David, and the contagion that we're seeing literally and figuratively, you know, stocks essentially giving back every gain that they have made so far this year. So we're going to get into that in a number of ways. We're going to talk to doctors, economists, uh, and whatnot, and we're starting to hear this, obviously, seep through corporate earnings as well. We're going to get numbers from HP after the bell. Yeah, by the way, earlier we had the executive director of the Port of Los Angeles here who was telling us how badly their business has been hit. It's really very significant. He doesn't see it going away. Okay, that's looking forward to Bloomberg Business Week.
Coming up with Jason Kelly and Carol Bass here shortly. That does it for Balance of Power for today. I'm David Weston, and this is Bloomberg Radio. That saying, success breeds success, it's true. Are we seeing any improvement? Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly. How would you describe you? Set for Life is the game from the National Lottery where you can win 10 grand every month for 30 years. So go smash this month, next month, and make every month amazing. Play Set for Life Mondays and Thursdays. Set for Life from the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Prize may be capped, rules, procedures, and game-specific rules apply. Players must be 16 or over. The 1413 LNER train, Coach C, taking aunties with cold hands to nephews with warm cheeks in Edinburgh. Remorseful revellers back to their beds in Leeds. Business mums gliding over the fourth bridge towards adoring toddlers in Newcastle. And a band heading to London to wow a group of strangers in a tiny pub. This is us. These are our journeys. This is our LNER. What do you do to be an everyday superhero, like Mary? So I know it's tempting to pour used cooking oil straight down the sink, but I spoke to the local council and they said the best way to get rid of oil or fat is to collect it, once it's cooled down, of course, in a used container. And then you can scoop it out and put it in the bin. Cooking oils and fats block thousands of pipes every year. Save our sewers, rivers and seas by putting them in the bin where they belong. Visit thameswater.co.uk forward slash bin it. Together, we can care for the environment. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Start hearing more of what you want. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations, live commercial-free news, and every live NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL game. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. Show capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Insight from the reporters and editors who bring you America's most trusted business magazine. Plus, global business, finance, and tech news as it happens. Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York, also from our L.A. Bureau and streaming on YouTube. Welcome to Bloomberg Business Week. It is Monday, February 24th, 2020. Carol Masser, I'm in New York. My co-host, Jason Kelly, is in L.A. Both of us, though, watching uh, what's going on in the markets. Jason, it is all about contagion, uh, the virus spreading, and we've got a market sell-off that's spreading to around the globe. Well, and earlier today, Carol, we heard from the head of the Port of Los Angeles right here who said it is really affecting their business. This is spreading. It's spreading economically, financially, and obviously from a human perspective as well. We're going to have it from all angles. All right. First up, let's get a check on those uh, market numbers. Let's get on over to Charlie Pellet. And Charlie, no doubt about it, risk off today. Uh, indeed, red on the screen. Not only that, but we have wiped out our year-to-date gains for the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 index flat on the year. Let's begin with the S&P. Now at 32.30, down 107 points. That is a drop of 3.2%. The Dow down 966 points. That's a drop of 3.3%. And NASDAQ is down 347 points, a drop there of 3.6%. Ten-year yield, 1.36%. Equities tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia as authorities struggle to keep the coronavirus from spreading more widely outside of China. Havens such as gold surging. We've got gold up now by 1.8%, 16.72 the ounce. Crude plunging 4.3%. West Texas intermediate crude down 238 a barrel, 51.10. Brent 55.94, lower by 4.4%. So again, recapping steep losses for U.S. stocks with the S&P down now by 3.2%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And Charlie, thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week, a bi coastal edition. I'm Jason Kelly in Los Angeles. Carol Masser back home in New York City. But as we mentioned, it is all virus all the time in many ways. We're going to talk about it from the perspective of the market, obviously, but we're also going to catch up with what one Apple supplier has to say. We're going to hear from the CEO of Dialogue Semiconductor, Carol. Right. Looking forward to his perspective. We're also going to ask the question is Chinese healthcare. 
healthcare, excuse me, equipped to manage the virus. A fascinating story by our own Andy Brown, who has spent a lot of time over in Asia, China specifically. So firsthand knowledge there. And then let's not forget, Jason, we have HP earnings coming up after the closing bell. The earnings continue. So we'll break them down and have some instant analysis. Well, and also we can't get too far away from politics, obviously. Got Mm -hmm. a little bit of a different take from Peter Coy. He's going to tell us what Democrats might learn from the recent NBA All-Star game. Yeah, that's a a different type of story and looking forward to that. We'll also get his thoughts on the virus and what it means for the economic outlook. First up, though, let's set the Business Week agenda. Kriti Gupta is with us, Markets Live reporter at Bloomberg News in our Interactive Broker Studio, along with Dave Wilson, our stocks editor here at Bloomberg News. Dave, I want to start with you. Um, We're seeing selling across the board here. We absolutely are. I mean, you look at the 11 main industry groups in the S&P 500, they're all down, even the utilities, the real estate stocks, the relatively safe kind of investments, the ones that you buy for their dividend yields, they're lower. Energy stocks taking the biggest hits. We've certainly seen that before. And uh, you look at the S&P 500 energy index at the moment is down 4.4%. And there are just 18 stocks in the S&P 500 higher at the moment. Uh, the one that stands out, perhaps, is Gilead Sciences because you had the also world- virus related. Absolutely, because yeah. you had the World Health Organization, uh, uh, an official there, come out and say, you know, one of their drugs, which is just investigational at this point, looks like uh, the only thing right now that is available that may be able to treat the coronavirus. So, you know, you've got that going on. And then, of course, on the other side of the coin, all kinds of stocks getting beaten up because of uh, the concern about how the virus will play out. Uh, Travel companies especially, you look at the biggest declines in the S&P 500, you see American Airlines, you see Norwegian Cruise Line and Carnival, uh, Royal Caribbean as well. And, uh, you know, then beyond that, just one little point, I know you're going to be talking politics. Yep. Right. You look at what's going on with the health insurers and the hospital owners. They are down big time. And while you might think that's coronavirus related, it's probably more to do with the fact that Mr. Medicare for all, Bernie Sanders, won big time in the Nevada caucuses over the weekend. Right. A bunch of things playing out in the market here, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kriti Gupta, come on in here. You're talking to investors. You're talking to our colleagues there on the desk, trying to make sense of this in real time. As you go down a level in this virus story, what specifically do you think investors are reacting to, or is it just an overall sentiment play? I mean, sentiment, uh, but also just this idea here that we are finally seeing a a read through into uh, something outside of China. And a big part of this virus story that we've heard so far is, you know, it's just contained to China, it's just contained to Asia. Now that uh, news is coming to Italy, that is hitting uh, Italy's industrial uh, sector, essentially. Um, Milan is a huge financial hub, also very closely uh, partnered with Germany and uh, the Netherlands with France. Now we're starting to see it spread a little bit in Europe, uh, that read through is really uh, what's concerning investors. Why are you seeing the sell-off today? Yeah, and I'm, you know, looking at the stories, Jason, I love our function on the Bloomberg uh, VRUS, and it's just everything and anything to do with the virus, and Goldman Sachs coming in, and they're saying that these sliding U.S. yields may have further to fall. I mean, that's another story. We're focusing on the equity markets, but as I, I'm trying to think who said it, or I saw uh, some analysis basically just saying that, you know, equity is now finally catching up, Dave, to what the bond market's been saying all along with this low-rate environment. Things aren't that great out there. No, absolutely. And we've had the 10-year yield at a record low today following mm-hmm. the example of the 30-year yield when you're looking at treasuries. So, I mean, there's real concern. You know, you hear uh, the possibility of three rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. When you look at what's happening in the futures markets, it's kind of signaling what may lie ahead. And that would basically undo what the central bank did last year if it plays out that way. I mean, certainly uh, there's a lot of room between here and there, you know, in terms of how the economy is performing and whatnot. But certainly the issues are out there and things that people might not have figured would happen just a few weeks ago are now right. at least uh, kind of being priced in. Jason, I'm sure you're watching right now that 10 years at 136. There was a story in the Bloomberg that said now uh, traders are pricing in a total of 205 basis points of interest rates, uh, cuts from seven major central banks by the end end of the year that's up three hold, threefold excuse right. me from the end of 2019 and as Dave just mentioned you know now looking for the US central bank as well to be aggressive we we're going to hear uh, from uh, some central bank uh, central uh, bank folks uh, this week and that will be very key to see what kind of guidance we get on that 
Well, and it's interesting, too, to look at, you know, as you mentioned, the VRUS function on the Bloomberg. And as I look at it, you know, the companies that are listed as being affected, and, you know, we, and we break this down by price change, but also the number of news stories, the number of tweets, what stories they're related to. You look down the list. Apple, not surprising. Samsung, Carnival, Air France, Gilead, Volkswagen. It just gives you a sense that this really is not sector specific. It is not relegated to just a couple different uh, pieces of the economy. So uh, certainly worth watching. All right. Our thanks to Kriti Gupta, Markets Live reporter for Bloomberg. Uh, she was in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio along with Dave Wilson. He'll be back a little bit later on with his chart and stock of the day. Carol, let's do the Bloomberg Business Week bite of the day. It's one number that tells us a lot. Today's number is 50%. Right. According to Bloomberg Intelligence uh, analyst, China's online game publishers and online entertainment platforms could benefit from the coronavirus scare as more people stay at home and pay for content to pass the time. The escalation of the outbreak during Lunar New Year may amplify players' spending as in-game promotions and events have been timed to coincide with the holiday. Sensor Tower data suggesting industry sales jump 40 to 50 percent that week. And Jason, e-commerce and uh, advertising platforms, they may be severely impacted from merchant disruptions while travel and local service companies are likely to be the biggest losers. I have to say, this takes me back to the beginning of my career, worked on a mutual fund show, and this is what we did. We looked at what was going on in the news and what it would mean for various mutual funds because if you right. had an earthquake, the cement companies were going to be needed. I mean, it just looked at news because this is how it, you know, really all ultimately works. You know, who benefits, who loses right. from things that happen in our world. All right. Well, coming up, we're going to talk about the virus from a medical perspective. Check in with an expert down at Johns Hopkins. That's all straight ahead. But first, uh, let's stay in New York there with Bob Moon. He's got world and national headlines. Hey, Bob. Jason, a U.S. appeals court has upheld new Trump administration rules imposing more hurdles for women seeking abortions. They ban taxpayer-funded clinics from making abortion referrals. A split verdict in movie mogul Harvey Weinstein's trial. He was convicted on two counts, rape and sexual assault though he was cleared of three other more serious counts. I hope that survivors will see that in this justice system, prosecutors, judges, and juries will believe them. Uh, even when the facts are not simple, and even when the dynamics of the relationships between the survivors and the abuser are complicated. New York District Attorney Cyrus Vance reacting to the verdicts. Weinstein was immediately handcuffed and led off to jail. The widow of Kobe Bryant has sued the owner of the helicopter that crashed in fog and killed her husband and her 13-year-old daughter last month. The wrongful death lawsuit filed by Vanessa Bryant claims the pilot was careless and negligent by flying in cloudy conditions January 26th and should have aborted the flight. Byron Era Zabayan was among the nine people killed in the crash. The lawsuit was filed as a public memorial service for the basketball legend is being held at the arena where Bryant played most of his career. Among those paying tribute, a fan named Dave who drove 300 miles from Northern California. Kobe fan all my life since freshman in high school. So lots of emotions, um, but people happy and and at at least getting a chance to say goodbye in some kind of formal way. 20,000 tickets were issued for the event. There's been no word on who might speak or perform. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. I'm Bob Moon. Tom Keen and Jonathan Taro enjoy each other's company. Most of us don't speak Mandarin. John, do you speak Mandarin? I did not speak okay, Mandarin. I just wanted to check that. Almost as much as they enjoy grilling economic experts. When this is over, do you bounce back or is there a lasting weakness to it? Which means that you will enjoy listening. If things get worse, we're ready to do more. Bloomberg Surveillance. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern. On Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg. The world is listening. Hi, I'm your host, Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in for Smokey, because after 75 years of... Only you can prevent wildfires. Turns out there's much more to say. Nearly 90% of wildfires are caused by us humans being careless. Dumping our used barbecue coals willy-nilly. Guess the song was wrong. We did start the fire. That's why I respect Mother Nature and her trees, whether coniferous or new car scented. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. 
Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies? Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. In depth and Will your summer sound like this? My train is delayed. Or this? Evening, everybody. This. Assistant required. Or this? This. this. Or this? Make it a summer of Amex and do more with American Express experiences. With exclusive pre-sale tickets for Somerset House Summer Series, Wimbledon and British Summertime in Hyde Park. Search Why Amex. Subject to availability, terms apply. Good morning, this is your southern service to London, Victoria. Join in our onboard quiz. Here's our next clue. What C sounds like a handheld party food but keeps you dry and protected from the rain? Not canapes, canopies. At Southern Railway, we're investing over £7 million into making improvements for you, like canopies, cycle parking, and new platform lighting across more of our stations. Find out more and book your tickets at southernrailway.com. Southern Railway, we're with you. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Start hearing more of what you want. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations, live commercial-free news, and every live NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL game. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live-breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. On the leading edge, we can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. Are you well positioned to stand out from your competition? Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and SIPC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system already. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now, there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps, and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. 
Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babbel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet, the selling company. Continues stocks bouncing along the bottom. The Dow is now down by 1,010 points. That's a drop of 3.5%. S&P down 112 points, a decline of 3.4%. NASDAQ down 364, a drop there of 3.8%. Equities tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia as authorities struggle to keep the coronavirus from spreading more widely outside China. We've got gold surging 1.7%, 1671 the ounce, the 10-year yield 1.35%, and crude oil slumping 4.1%. West Texas Intermediate 51.17 a barrel, Brent 57 even. It is lower by 4.3%. So again, recapping here, a 1,000-point drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, down 3.5%. S&P down 3.4%. NASDAQ down 3.8%. Our next market update 12 minutes from now. Keep it locked into Bloomberg for the latest. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, terrific. We are up to date. Charlie Pellet, thank you so much. Well, the risk trade, as you just heard from Charlie, all thanks to the rapid increase of the coronavirus and cases specifically outside of China. Questions continue to linger about how exactly the virus is spread. Infections are now emerging in people who have not traveled to China or come into contact with confirmed cases. So we want to have some clarity about where we are in the virus and what the outbreak and the continued outbreak of cases outside of China, what it all means. Let's uh, bring back Dr. Jennifer Nezzo, Senior Scholar at Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security at the Bloomberg School of Public Health. Of course, uh, the Bloomberg Public uh, School of Health is um, supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. Michael Bloomberg, of course, too, a Democratic presidential candidate. So, Dr. Nezzo, nice to have you back here on Bloomberg Radio. So, how do you read this news and what it says about where we are in the spread of the virus? Yeah, I think the reports that we heard over the weekend of um, rise in cases outside in countries outside of China and among people who haven't traveled to China, um, while obviously worrisome from a public health standpoint, are not um, unexpected given what we've learned about the virus so far. Uh, we have known for a while now that this virus is capable of spreading quite quickly and quite silently, which uh, makes it difficult to know at any one point where in the world it's transmitting. So that we're seeing uh, cases in new countries um, kind of tracks with what we've expected. And so when do you start to get more worried at this point, uh, Dr. Nezzo? Because I have to say, you know, these Italian cases and everything that's going on in South Korea, I do think that is giving people a little bit more pause. And as you say, sort of new countries, not a strong link, maybe any link, uh, with some of these cases directly back to China or to, to Wuhan. What's the next sort of worrisome step, just to be honest? Yeah, well, I think one of the things that we've long suspected is that a virus like this that spreads as quickly as it does and as silently as it does, that it would likely turn up in many parts of the globe. And that's why you'll probably hear a lot of discussion as of late as to whether or not we're in a pandemic. There's a bit of a disagreement among uh, public health officials as to whether we're in one now, but I think it's hard to argue that we won't be in one at one point, regardless if you want to call what we're seeing uh, now a pandemic. And so what that means is that um, countries should expect to see cases. And what that will also mean is that they will need to shift their focus from just trying to stop the virus at their borders to thinking about how best to protect their people from the virus that they will experience. 
Um, this situation is obviously quite worrisome given the large numbers of deaths that were reported. One of the things I think we still need to work out is how many infections are out there and then to hold that um, in balance with the deaths that are reported. Uh, it could very well be that there are many, many more infections out there which would bring down our count death rate calculations. Um, but nonetheless, it's a situation that warrants uh, concern and, and preparedness by governments. Well, and what's interesting, though, and, and I want to just challenge you a little bit, if I may, Dr. Nezzo, yeah. is that, you know, the markets and investors are certainly reading this as something much worse than they had thought maybe on Saturday or on Friday, even though we did see stocks lower on Friday, but that wasn't surprising ahead of the weekend. So are we misreading this, this spread? Is this, you know, from a medical perspective, did you expect that it was going to spread like it is at this point? Yeah, I did, and um, I have long thought that there has been a lot of hope, um, and I think some of this hope has been echoed by government leaders that this virus could be stopped, um, that you know that China's uh, very drastic actions would stop transmission there, and that countries would respond by preventing people from traveling for China, and that that would just put an end to the virus. Those were methods that worked um, in 2003 when we had the SARS epidemic, but this virus is quite different than SARS, and it's spreading much more quickly and um, with mild, many milder cases, which for me has always signified that it would be very difficult to contain. That means stopping the spread of the virus entirely. I have long thought that we would likely see a global spread and that we should be putting our emphasis on how best to uh, minimize the impacts of, from the virus. Well, and Dr. Nuzzi, you're, you're bringing up a really interesting point that, that candidly, I had, I had not really thought through in, in all of these discussions, which is, I guess, if there are many more cases than, than maybe previously anticipated, maybe it's not as dangerous in, in, in a way that we look at it not as, you know, this sort of deadly thing that's sweeping across countries, but as something that people can be treated for and that, as you say, sort of countries need to get their arms around treating rather than containing. Yeah, I think we need to get our arms around this because it will um, determine what measures we take. Uh, for instance, China has taken very aggressive measures, uh, which um, in my view, has um, potentially exacerbated the toll of the epidemic there, just in terms of the social and economic impacts of it. But obviously, population's willingness to be um, uh, subjected to those measures might be higher if we thought the virus the virus were uh, as deadly as uh, it just seems to be, just based on the raw numbers that are reported. Um, but anyway, regardless of what the true uh, you know case. Um, fatality percentages wind up being, um, just the fact that there are so many deaths reported and so many um, hospitalizations and critically ill people, that will be a struggle for a number of countries. Uh, we know that every flu season, um, hospitals you know, across the world are, are stressed and then layering on top of this a virus that could produce significant levels of um, severe illness, critical illness, and deaths that will be quite challenging. All right, we're going to leave it on that note. Dr. Nuzzo, thank you so much. Jennifer Nuzzo, uh, doctor, senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security at the Bloomberg School of Public Health, joining us on the phone from Baltimore. And, of course, the Bloomberg School of Public Health, supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP, Bloomberg Philanthropies. Of course, uh, all of that home to Bloomberg News, Bloomberg Radio, Bloomberg TV. Michael Bloomberg, of course, a candidate as well for the Democratic presidential nomination. All right, coming up, we'll continue to track the markets for you. And also, Get a, get a key insight from one individual. He's the CEO of Dialogue Semiconductor, also an Apple supplier. So we'll see what he has to say about uh, how this virus is impacting those global supply chains. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week, and this is Bloomberg Radio. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stocks are near their lows for the day, with the Dow showing a loss of over 1,000 points. Fear is intensifying as authorities struggle to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Hugh Johnson at Hugh Johnson Advisors says most of that fear is fear of the unknown. It's unpredictable how widespread this is going to become. It's wide. It is very unpredictable as to the magnitude of the impact on the economy of China. And the rest of the world. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now down 1,023. The S&P 500 down 113. The Nasdaq Composite is down 369. The market sell-off strained the online systems at Fidelity Investments and Charles Schwab. The firm said some customers saw technical issues at the opening as stocks sold off. 
Boingo Wireless may be on the block. Sources say the Wi-Fi service is exploring a potential sale after a possible suitor came calling. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, (gasps) you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. In depth and- Discover Cork with Aer Lingus when you fly from London from $55.99 each way as part of a return trip. Experience this vibrant city and head to the coast for authentic Irish seafood and stunning scenery. Smart enjoys a short break in Ireland. Smart flies Aer Lingus. Book now at aerlingus.com. Offer subject to conditions and availability. What am I saving for? My passion. Food photography. I train to be a landscape garden designer. I open a food store and sell my famous fish tacos. I go to stuntman school. I'd be a wedding planner. I'd start a dog grooming business. <coughs> Sorry, we'd start a dog grooming business. What are you waiting for? Make your one day happen with the Fidelity Stocks and Shares ISA. Your capital is at risk. Tax rules may change. Full terms for our Stocks and Shares ISA are available on our website. 18 plus UK residents. Good morning. This is your southern service to London, Victoria. Join in our onboard quiz. Here's our next clue. What C sounds like a handheld party food, but keeps you dry and protected from the rain? Not canapes, canopies. <laughs> At Southern Railway, we're investing over £7 million into making improvements for you, like canopies, cycle parking, and new platform lighting across more of our stations. Find out more and book your tickets at southernrailway.com. Southern Railway. We're with you. You love tune in for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on tune in. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Start hearing more of what you want. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations, live commercial-free news, and every live NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL game. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Block, hook, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. The Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Well, Carol, clearly the supply chain has been a big question here among this virus outbreak. We're going to catch up with the CEO of a company that's 
right in the midst of it when it relates to Apple. That's right, Jason. Gets roughly two-thirds of the company revenues from Apple specifically. But first up, let's get back to your top business stories and got to take a look at the trading day. Hey, Charlie Tyler. Well, hello there. Let's get right to the numbers. I'll give you the story behind the numbers in just a moment. Right now, the Dow down 918 points, a drop there of 3.2 percent. S&P 500 index down 100 points. That is a drop right now of 3 percent. NASDAQ slumping 324 points, a decline there of 3.4 percent. S&P 500 index wiping out most of its gain for the year. So far this year, the Dow has wiped out all of its gain. It is now lower by 1.6 percent for the year. Equities are tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia as authorities struggle to keep the coronavirus from spreading more widely outside China. Havens surging. We've got the 10-year yield 1.36 percent. Gold up nine tenths of one percent right now, 1658 the ounce. Oil tumbling on intensified fears that the coronavirus will harm global growth as the contagion spreads to more than 30 countries. West Texas intermediate crude traded here in New York down 3.6 percent, 51.45 a barrel. Brent, the global benchmark now at 56.35. It is down by 3.4 percent. Today, though, all three main U.S. stock benchmarks slumping more than 3%. David Owen is chief European economist at Jefferies International. I think at the end of the day, a lot of, um, a lot of investors were looking at this uh, sort of bottoming out in, in, in Asia. And obviously now it's spread to um, Italy. And that, that is the concern of whether it continues spreading through uh, Europe and then potentially the U.S. Um, you know, that's the concern we have at the moment. Among the hard-hit sectors today, travel, tourism stocks, Delta, for example, among the airlines, down 6.7%. UAL, the parent of United, it is down 3.5%. American Airlines Group, it is trading lower by 9%. Cruise stocks also pummeled today. For example, Carnival Corporation down 7.9%. Royal Caribbean Cruises Limited, it is down by 7.1%. Again, recapping here, steep losses for U.S. stocks. We'll have our next update coming up in 12 minutes with the S&P down 100 now. That is a drop of 3%. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Thank you so much, Charlie. Steep losses indeed. Definitely, though, off our lows of the session so far. And it all has to do with those increasing concerns about the coronavirus. Uh, the worry, of course, as we just heard from Charlie, impacting the financial markets. Always great, though, to check in with members of the corporate community when we have a situation like this, especially one that is very much involved in the global supply chain, including <laughs> the Apple supply chain. In fact, roughly two-thirds of this company's revenues come from Apple. Dr. Jalal Bagirli is CEO at Dialogue Semiconductor. He joins us on the phone from London. Dr. Bagirli, great to have you here with Jason Kelly and myself. Um, I do want to start, we know you did Hi, a John. deal recently. Hi, and we'll get to that in a moment, but talk to us about this virus and how it's changing and impacting um, what's going on at your company. Um, so, uh, I think uh, I'll make uh, comments about what, what we see. So, like uh, pretty much all semiconductor companies, the supply chain um, for us and uh, customers that we uh, supply tends to go through Asia, and particularly China. Mm -hmm. So, so it's no great surprise that uh, these are um, in terms of um, you know capacity and, and operation. Um, and I think uh, you know it is a it is a tragic event in terms of the effect on people and uh, and the whole area, um, and uh, from a disease point of view. But from a business and the operation point of view, I think we see um, we've seen a um, uh, number of uh, uh, manufacturing contract manufacturers of you know phones and uh, electronic products are gradually. Uh, Operating back, uh, but maybe 30, 40 percent capacity with uh, much reduced people, i.e., they don't have all their workers back at the factories. Um, but I do think you have all your workers? We, do, you, do you have all your workers at your factories as a result? We don't manufacture. Mm -hmm. We don't manufacture. We, we are we are we do design and marketing, and okay. uh, we manage our manufacturing through outsourcing. So we don't have direct so factory um, operation. But, but we deal with factories all the time, every day. And uh, when we see the capacities are coming back uh, in terms of our customers' uh, factories, um, every, every week we see improvements. So, so I think in a few weeks, my guess is from a business operation point of view, those factories will be getting very close to normal operation. 
All right, so Dr. Begarly, let's talk about the deal that you did, because obviously amidst all of this, uh, you're still creating partnerships and, and, uh, and doing some, some M&A work. What does this uh, deal with Adesto do for you? Right. So Adesto uh, is a um, uh, listed company on NASDAQ. They are um, a uh, IoT, uh, pure play IoT business uh, play. So what it does for us is um, increase our exposure to the uh, very attractive industrial uh, market for us. We've been um, entering this market recently, about a few months ago, with a small acquisition of a company called Creative Chips. So Adesto gives us scale in that market um, and providing us with technology for um, uh, Internet of Things as, as it relates to industrial buildings, smart buildings, smart cities type application, both in terms of silicon chips as well as uh, cloud connectivity solution platforms that we can offer our customers. And so more deals to come, do, do you think? Are you in a mode where, where you want to be more aggressive on the combination front? I think, you know, we have always um, uh, a pipeline of uh, targets that uh, is uh, under under review and, and uh, we look at a number of uh, angles clearly before we, we, we make any move on uh, a target, you know, from a, from a fit, strategic fit, shareholder value, culture, bunch of other uh, um, items that we look at. So we do have other targets to look at, but you know, currently we've just closed on uh, Adesto and we're very pleased with that and very excited about uh, integrating that company when the deal actually closes. So one last question, just got about 30 seconds, so I have to ask you to be quick. I just want to go back to the virus. So based on what you're seeing, because I'm assuming that you saw, obviously, a little bit of an impact as the virus got worse, you're saying you would you would make the conclusion that things are getting better because you're seeing kind of business pick up again in terms of some of your clients who manufacture and just got about 30 seconds here. Yes, I think we, we see over the next few weeks, you know, more and more factories are telling us that they have more people coming back and they're opening more of their branches. You know, sometimes they have multiple uh, factories. Some of them have been open, some have been shut so far, but as they get decontaminated and the workers come back from other parts of China, they, they, they add more capacity. All right, going to leave it on that note. Um, we really appreciate it. Dr. Bagheerly, Dr. Jalal Bagheerly, he is Chief Executive Officer at Dialogue Semiconductor, uh, joining us on this Monday on the phone from London and, of course, uh, giving us some great insight in terms of the virus and also talking about some of the deal, a deal actually that they just did last week. All right, let's get back uh, to your world of national news headlines. For that, we turn things back over to Bob Moon. Hi, Bob. Hi, Carol. The verdict, guilty of rape and a separate count of sexual assault and a man who was one of the most powerful producers in the movie industry is now behind bars. 67-year-old Harvey Weinstein could end up being sent to prison for decades. And after today's verdicts from a jury in New York, attorney Gloria Allred, who represents three of Weinstein's accusers, points out there's another legal reckoning ahead in Los Angeles. Justice has been a long time coming, but it's finally here. And it's not the end, because L.A., is still going to proceed. Dozens of women also have filed civil lawsuits against him. There was a follow-up battle between the prosecution and defense today over whether the former movie mogul would immediately be sent to jail. The judge ordered that he be handcuffed and taken away moments later. The government faces the prospect of additional health spending to deal with the coronavirus at a time of rising national debt. Bloomberg's Irv Chapman reports from Washington. Even if the money is borrowed, it won't be an issue in the near term because interest rates remain low, Philip Swagel, director of the Congressional Budget Office, said in a Bloomberg interview. It gives us some more runway that deal with the fiscal challenge, but we don't have to do it immediately because the carrying cost of the debt is so low right now. As debt rises, we understand that interest rates eventually will rise as well. This year, the budget office expects the deficit will top a trillion dollars. In Washington, Irv Chapman, Bloomberg Radio. The new virus took aim at a broadening swath of the globe today with officials in Europe and the Middle East scrambling to limit the spread of the outbreak in those regions. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Bob Moon. 
25 years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain, a company whose incredible innovations changed the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering the innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. Attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has, uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new... re-engineered the investor experience are often rewarded however in an industry paralyzed with complexity few act with agility or decisively few run their businesses strategically yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system you can Go boldly toward change with SCI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SCI's Investment Manager Services. At SCI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize. Okay, everyone at home, put down that glass of wine, jump up off that sofa right now, and work up a sweat. One, two, three, four. Or leave the motivation to vitality. You could get the Apple Watch Series 5 with our health insurance. Set goals, track your activity, and keep that New Year fitness routine on track. Now that's real motivation. Search Vitality Apple Watch. Life's better with Vitality. Available on certain Vitality plans. Minimum premiums, terms, and exclusions apply. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. This is not a commercial. This is a reminder. With TuneIn Premium, you could be listening to more music commercial free. Get over 45 commercial free music stations. Visit tunein.com slash premium to upgrade. And achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting a Teenager Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly Agitated. Jelly is a shorter, better way to. Jealous, as in 
Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion, or your race, or because you have children, or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. U.S. equities have climbed from the lows of the day after tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia. Havens, including treasuries and gold, remain higher. Right now, we have got the 10 year up 30, 30 seconds, yield 1.37%. Equities lower with the S. S&P down 95 points. That is a drop now of 2.9%. Dow Jones Industrial Average down 877 points, down 3%. And NASDAQ is down 305 points, a drop of 3.2%. Gold up $15 the ounce, up 9 tenths of 1%, 16.58. And we've got West Texas Intermediate Crude down 3.6%, lower. A dollar ninety a barrel, fifty one forty seven. Brent is at fifty six forty. For Brent, that is a drop there of three point six percent. Fast moving markets. Our next update coming up twelve minutes from now. But the S and P right now lower by ninety six. That is a drop of two point nine percent. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Carol Masser in New York, Jason Kelly in our LA bureau, and this is Bloomberg Radio. When you feel like your flavor is gone, the way of the pre-shell pistachio. All right, so this next story is a little bit different. We've been talking a lot about the virus and will continue to, but a fascinating feature in the upcoming edition of Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, you can read it online on Bloomberg.com and via the Bloomberg terminal, a pistachio. War between the U.S. and Iran. Mark Champion joins us. He's a senior reporter for international affairs for Bloomberg. Joining us on the phone from London. We appreciate him uh, giving us a long day. And Joel Weber, the editor of Bloomberg Business Week, back in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. So, Mark, this is a little bit, as Carol Master might say, of a like, wait, what kind of story? Tell us what's going on in the world of pistachios. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the U.S., uh, you know, we all know that the U.S. and Iran have been at each other for uh, decades, basically since the revolution in, in, 1970, uh, in 1979. Um, but uh, perhaps a little less known is that the, uh, you know, one aspect of that contest has been over the pistachio nut, uh, which Iran, for, you know, literally thousands of years, more than a thousand years, perhaps more than two, uh, was basically a, a monopoly producer. 
producer of, um, and it exported them. And then uh, at the time of the revolution, saw this as a big source of hard currency and very successfully developed a, a big industry exporting, you know, this is a billion dollar plus industry uh, exporting uh, nuts to the rest of the world. Um, but the U.S., uh, got into the act um, in you know the first crop in 1976, um, and since then uh, California has uh, been you know expanding its uh, uh, production enormously uh, with the help of uh, you know bans, variously bans and uh, heavy duties of 241 percent uh, on uh, pistachio nuts from Iran at various times, um, and has now overtaken Iran as the the largest producer in the world. What's gone wrong for Iran on this front, Mark? Well, all kinds of things. I mean, first, you know, one, there's no doubt that the uh, sanctions policy, you know, broader financial sanctions that uh, made it difficult to invest, you know, that these things uh, had an impact. Uh, secondly, um, you, you have climate change, uh, no different for Iran than, than California, except that uh, Iran has been... Uh, relied even in you know the uh, at the, the earliest days uh, it relied on a an ancient form of underground uh, canaling uh, to bring the water to the pistachio fields which tend to be to the groves which tend to be in um, in very arid areas you know, it needs a hot climate it needs cool winters um, but as you have very specific uh, climate conditions needed and tends to be dry in those areas and so they they always brought the water from underground but since the revolution uh, one of the promises of the revolution was that, you know, ordinary farmers would be able to have access to as much water as they wanted. And they've been drilling wells, uh, you know, unregistered wells across the country and sucking out with electric pumps instead of the old systems uh, as much water as they can. So that's, you know, that's the, the second item. And then the third is simply um, a failure of governance and, uh, and planning and just uh, general efficiency so that, you know, you know, since um, you know the, the the U.S. started producing, they both used to yield about the same amount of pistachios per, per uh, hectare um, back in the 70s. But now the U.S. Uh, produces more than three times as many pistachios per hectare. The Iranians haven't improved at all. Hey, Mark, did you do testing as part of uh, your reporting for this article? Well, every time I, I have <laughs> gone to Iran, um, I've... You know, I've eaten a lot of pistachios. They are fantastic, and the Iranian pistachios are really, really very good. So it was, you know, really striking to me that you know, last year, the last sort of growing year, which goes across you know, was would have been 1918 to 19, I mean, 20, 2018 to 2019, um, their crop simply collapsed. Um, it was the result of four years of drought, and it, it virtually disappeared. Um, and, uh, you know, this year they've had, you know, heavy rains, floods and so on, and they've got a crop back, um, but it's a rather poor quality. And, and in the past, the Iranians were enormously proud that their pistachio nuts they thought were better uh, than those produced by California. But uh, this year, at least, not true. Well, and I feel like, Mark, you know, somewhere Sean Don and our trade guru is, spy <laughs> is smiling but it's like, this is the trade war. You know, th this is sort of global trade at its best and worst to, to some extent. Where does it go from here? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, basically, uh, there's no reason to think that Iran is going to uh, turn this around. Um, they, you know, the, the climate change isn't going to get any better. Um, the governance doesn't look like getting any better. Um, and certainly U.S. sanctions aren't going to get any better for any time soon. So uh, there's no reason to think that's going to turn around. Um, and as a result of that, uh, the, there's, there's a global trade organization for nuts. And, and they believe that there's about a 10 to 15 percent shortage in the, of supply in the market for global demand, in part because um, the Iranians simply haven't been able to, to grow their crops. So uh, now what you see is a lot of primarily Iranian farmers, uh, exiles and so on, who have experience of growing pistachios from Iran, um, going to different countries, new countries, to see if they can uh, develop crops in these other countries. Uh, I spoke, uh, went to visit a farm in, in, in Georgia where uh, a, 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 an Iranian, you know, someone who left after the revolution um, is now uh, developing a, a, a big farm. Um, but it's also happening in uh, in Ukraine, in Azerbaijan, in right. 
uh, you know, in Central Asia. Uh, so, you know, the, the people are, the, in Australia too, Spain, they're all trying to develop. Well, it's one of those great Business Week stories where you really, you know, just kind of take it for granted, something like pistachios, but you realize that there's a lot more as you dig into it uh, in terms of what's going on in the market and certainly when it comes to uh, trade. Mark Champion, thank you so much. Senior Reporter for International Affairs at Bloomberg News. On the phone from London, Jill Weber, thank you as well. Editor of Bloomberg Business Week in our interactive broker studio here in New York. Now, for those of you listening in New York, D.C., and San Francisco, also watching on YouTube, Bloomberg Business Week, it will continue. If you're listening on Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, Bay State Business, it is coming up next. And in the meantime, Jason, let's just remind everybody, uh, we are seeing a sell-off, but we are coming off our lows of the session, and the trend in the last half hour has been to the upside in terms of yeah. pulling stocks off their lows. Still down 2.8% on the S&P 500, down 91 points. The Dow, which was down more than 1,000 points, is now uh, with a loss of about 830. Eight, that's 2.9% to the downside, 3% decline on the NASDAQ, down 294 points. No surprise you've seen the NASDAQ uh, in terms of uh, the major equity averages, really the outperformer here in 2020. Well, and clearly this is an economic story in many ways, and we're going to dig into that next with Kathleen Hayes and Carl Riccadonna. They're going to help us understand the shape of this, sort of drawing on the global expertise in many ways of Bloomberg News. We've been looking at this, uh, as we said at the top of the show, from all angles, and certainly the global economy uh, has a lot to lose here uh, if this continues. So that's all coming up straight ahead. That saying, success breeds success, it's true. Are we seeing any improvement? Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly. How would you describe your outlook? Weekday afternoons at 2 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, Bloomberg Business Week, now live on YouTube. With the Bloomberg Small Business Report, I'm John Tucker, brought to you by Dell Small Business. Americans have slowed the pace at which they're forming new companies. A Census Bureau report based on tax filings shows that the longest expansion on record has failed to restore entrepreneurship. At the Bank of Antander, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I'll read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I'm try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Cook into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Fantasy. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. This is not a commercial. This is a reminder. With TuneIn Premium, you could be listening to more music commercial-free. Get over 45 commercial-free music stations. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. We move into the final hour of trading. On this Monday, we have got the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ all declining steep losses for the U.S. stock market. Off our session lows, however, the Dow Jones and average have been down more than 100 points right now. The Dow is down 810. That is a drop right now of 2.8 percent. S&P 500 index as we move into the final hour down 89 points, a drop of 2.7 percent. NASDAQ down 285 points, a drop there of just about 3 percent. Stocks are Climbing from the lows of the day after tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia. Havens, including treasuries and gold, remain higher. Right now, we have got the 10-year up 29, 30 seconds yield there. 1.37%. Gold up 7 tenths of 1%, up 1070 the ounce at 16.54. West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil down 3.5% right now at 51.56 a barrel. Brent, the global benchmark, 56.52 for Brent. That is a drop right now of 3.4%. 
Bottom line, the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ all selling off a dramatic day across markets. Concerns about the spread of coronavirus. Mithra Warrior is Managing Director at TD Securities. The conversation up until now has been focused on supply shocks, right? Mm -hmm. But the big question is, what's this going to do to global demand? Not just Chinese Chinese tourism, but now what's going to happen to Italy with with Carnival being shut down, with uh, Fashion Week being highly restricted. Those are just some examples. So if this starts to bleed into demand, I think many of our clients are concerned that that's when you'll start to see a more prolonged concern. And, of course, the topic we'll be discussing right here on Bloomberg Radio. We have got uh, the SOX index, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, dropping today by 3.65%. Among specific semiconductor names, Intel shares moving lower now by 2.8%. NVIDIA is dropping by 5.5%. Qualcomm shares lower by 3.3%. Bottom line, the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ all slumping today. An 88-point drop off our session lows, but an 88-point drop for the S&P, down now by 2.6%. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. So let's do a little Business Week economics now. The team is gathered back in New York City. Kathleen Hayes, Global Economics and Policy Editor for Bloomberg, alongside Carl Riccadonna, Chief U.S. Economist for Bloomberg Economics, trying to make us make sense, as we all are, of why now, why the market and global economy seem to be reacting so negatively to this coronavirus outbreak after weeks of being like, yeah, maybe it's okay, except for some Friday sell-offs as the notable exception. Carl, I want to start with you. What are you hearing from the global team? What are you seeing that give you an econ- that gives you an economic lens into you know, what investors may be thinking here? Sure. Well, uh, what's interesting is as we look into uh, a lot of economic data, the timeliest economic uh, data that's being reported, uh, things like sentiment uh, surveys uh, for consumers and some uh, uh, purchasing manager surveys in the industrial sector, uh, we're not seeing impact yet of uh, the virus uh, uh, giving us some clues as to what uh, uh, should be happening to uh, overall growth. So instead, uh, we're forced into the realm of taking anecdotal data and trying Trying to uh, contort that into uh, an economic view, which certainly is is tenuous, but uh, you know, in fast changing developments like uh, the present, uh, that's pretty much all we have uh, to go on. So you look at things like uh, how equities are reacting and try to make a call about earnings and corporate profits and uh, what the ramifications could be for hiring and whatnot. Uh, but as we look at the economic data, uh, for instance, uh, you know, we look, had last week some uh, surveys: the New York Fed survey, the the Philadelphia Fed manufacturing surveys. Uh, they were off the charts to the high side. So that tells you that it, it's a tug of war in the U.S. economy at the moment uh, between the benefits of trade resolution, low energy prices, low utility bills from a mild winter, uh, low interest rates. Uh, all of those factors are actually considerable economic tailwinds, which we shouldn't undercount uh, the impact of that. And I should add into that uh, the, the lagged effect of all of the policy easing from last year's insurance cuts, right? Monetary policy takes 12 to 18 months uh, to really percolate fully uh, into the economy. So a lot of that insurance cutting from last year uh, is still uh, just arriving uh, in the economy. That being said, the supply chain disruptions are uh, substantial, but uh, we have to keep in mind uh, the, uh, both sides uh, on the uh, on the scale. I just want to say we just heard from one company uh, in particular where I think about two-thirds of their revenues come from Apple, their supply chain. He was optimistic. He says, I mean, they're in the semi-space, they're more design, but they said that in terms of their clients who do the manufacturing, they're starting to see some positive signs. Kathleen, I want you to come in because you said you were here last night, part of Daybreak Asia, and all the programming that we do. And I have to agree with you. Like, I looked at the Asian markets when I came in, and I'm like, wait a minute, not as bad as what we saw no, in no, Europe no, no. and the U.S. Tell us kind of what was going well, on. And you will remember when we were coming in, certainly for the equity market, we had the sell-off on Friday. So that definitely had an impact on, on Asian stock markets. Right. Um, I think... Be, but not to the extent we had that we had the Italian news... 
we had, uh, and of course, I think the biggest impact last night in, in Asia was, was South Korea. Mm-hmm. It was seeing the numbers are getting so much worse. It was knowing that the uh, Bank of Korea is meeting on Thursday, and they were already kind of at least 50% expected to cut their key rate, and people were just everybody jumping on the rate Cospi was down 3.9%. Yes, yes. And, and so I think that was, but nothing really like this, where now you see the bond market, the 10-year yield at 1.37. It was down at 1.36015, the all-time low, July 16th. How big a deal is that? Can you just give us some perspective? Well, you're, one, 1.318 was the low, July 2016. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a big deal because people are interpreting this as a sign that the bond market sees, oh my God, if the virus isn't contained. That was the other big theme last night. The virus has spread outside of China. The virus has spread outside of Asia. What if it can't be stopped? I think what we shouldn't forget, though, the bond market was already in rally mode. And we've had so many stories at Bloomberg News about all this cash on the sidelines, all this money that wanted to buy bonds. So there was already some momentum in that direction. As for the Federal Reserve, uh, we heard from several, Rafael Bostic, uh, Rich Clarity, he's speaking again this week. We heard from even Jim Bullard, who's you know been more of a dove, saying, look, uh, you know, we don't necessarily expect we're going to have to cut. The market's now, the bond market's now looking for two rate cuts at least. You can't really do more than two at a time. <laughs> at a time. But that's that's the play. I think Carl's right. I think the Fed is going to be pretty cautious, although we do have an op-ed on Bloomberg View from Narayana Coach Lakota, one of our writers, former head of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, and he thinks the Fed should not even wait for March. They should cut now. I don't think the Fed's going to jump on a bandwagon like in that. In an emergency move. Which we in an emergency move. I can't move, even remember the last time which we saw may, Well, like during that. the financial crisis. Financial crisis. Those types right, of yeah. moves. Uh, I don't think that Coach Lakota has met a rate cut he doesn't like. So uh, that's uh, not surprising uh, coming from him. Uh, the, the question is then that is going to send a, a sense of panic through the markets uh, potentially. Uh, what does the Fed know that's not yet priced into the broader market that you know they're taking inter you know intermeeting action? Uh, you know which doesn't mean that they won't have to come to the rescue at some point uh, later this year. But they've really been uh, pretty consistently uh, singing from the same hymnal that the economy is on pretty sound foot. The latest PMA, PMI data would support that, right. uh, in that they don't feel the need to make adjustment yet. So I think all eyes are going to be on Richard Clarida tomorrow afternoon at 3.15 when he speaks to the annual NABE conference down yeah. in Washington, D.C. It's a room full of economists. Yelena's He's talking be there, about right? monetary policy. I have one of my team there, Yelena Shilecheva, uh, listening to the remarks. Uh, this is the kind of speech where you can potentially send a new message to the you market. Know, but, but and the risk is, if they don't send that message and instead just go into rah-rah cheerleader mode, uh, we could see a repeat of what we saw back in Q4 of 2018 so thinking. Uh, when the Fed should have been easing and instead yeah. they tried to be a cheerleader uh, in the market. Well, but, uh, but you remember the but pre- so conference says no. in January when, when um, Jay Powell, the Fed chair, was pretty clear. We're watching it closely. We know it's hitting China. We know it could hit Asia. It's just too early to say what's going to happen. I don't think they've been, I don't think he's been cheerleaderish at all. I think they've been cautious. I think the markets were too quick to say, oh, this is going to be like SARS. Here's what's going to happen. And we're going to have this down. Then we're going to have the up. And one says it becomes like an echo chamber. Look at equities analysts aren't, aren't um, you know, pandemic <laughs> Experts, right. and I think that's what you no know, one really prepares you for, right? I mean, how there's no you don't you know, know what you don't know. That's right. There's no uh, model right. here to draw from. Right. But right. both equities and the bond market are pricing in expectations of slower growth and less inflation. So yes. if the Fed just right. comes out and says rah rah rah, the economy's strong, uh, the markets may cry foul. The equity as a market result. at this point catching up yeah. with the bond market. What it's been saying for so some exciting. time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much. A spirited discussion, as you say. We'll be looking forward to those comments from Clarita. Tomorrow, Kathleen Hayes, Carl Riccadonna, thank you so much. Let's get to Bob Moon there in New York. He's got world and national headlines. Hey, Bob. Jason, after years of casting couch rumors exploded into a torrent of sexual misconduct allegations that ended the career of movie mogul Harvey Weinstein, jurors in New York issued their own legal reckoning today, making it clear they were listening. Weinstein, with his manipulation, his resources, his attorneys, his publicists, and his spies, did everything he could to silence the survivors. But they refused to be silent. They spoke from their hearts, and they were heard.
Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus, Vi- Cyrus Vance hailing today's verdicts of guilty of a sexual assault in 2006 and rape in the third degree in 2013. The jury found him not guilty on the most serious charge, predatory sexual assault, that could have resulted in a life sentence. The once powerful movie producer, who is 67 years old, had a look of resignation as the verdicts were read. As the coronavirus spread in Europe and the Middle East today and the stock market fell, raising both public health fears and financial alarm, presidential advisor Kellyanne Conway said she would not be drawn into a discussion on the potential impact on either the economy or the election. I've sat in the situation room about the coronavirus, had briefings in the Oval Office, I was part of the president, nobody has mentioned the impact on the stock market and the impact on the elections. It just is nowhere I've been. Um, it's not appropriate. This is a public health emergency. It is a pandemic. In Europe today, coronavirus worries bordered on panic. Authorities in Italy set up roadblocks, called off soccer matches, and shuttered sites, including the famed La Scala Opera House, in response to a spike in cases there. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. I'm Bob Moon. Europe, stability, and constant evolution. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Your job is going to be even more important, I'd argue. Experience with consistent information. Would it be a policy mistake if global central banks signaled a more dovish stance? Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. So how do you tackle that? What's what's your mechanism? Weekdays at 1 a.m. Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business app, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me. But I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. In-depth analysis. Concise reporting. Need to know global business news. Around the world and across the markets. Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets. And much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg. The global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. If morning is not your favorite... If you're going to have NHS dental treatment, don't assume you can claim it for free. Not all benefits entitle you to free treatment. And if you claim when you're not entitled, you could face a penalty charge of £100, plus the cost of your treatment. Thankfully, the NHS Eligibility Checker will help you find out if you can claim for free. Then next time you're at the dentist you'll know exactly which box to tick. Search Check Before You Tick online today. Upgrade to TuneIn Premium and get over 45 commercial-free music stations. You'll also get live commercial-free news plus live play-by-play games from NFL, MLB, NBA, and NHL. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Cook into the end zone for the touchdown. 
From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live-breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. A lot of people aren't aware that TuneIn lets you listen to the same terrestrial stations that you pick up on your FM AM dial. Except you can hear them from anywhere. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. Financial investment firms, for the sixth straight time, we think it comes down to one thing. You. Because it's your input and feedback that keeps us focused on what's most important to you and your clients. And continually pushes us to be the best we can be. Maybe that's why we receive top marks in every category of the J.D. Power 2019 Advisor Satisfaction Survey. They named us number one in client support, number one in firm leadership, number one in operational support, number one in compensation, number one in professional development support, and number one in technology support. Ready to partner with the best? Call Commonwealth at 866-462-3638 or visit Commonwealth.com. And feel the power. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. For 2019 J.D. Power Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system already. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to the city in the water? Well, you're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. On Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pelleta. Down day on Wall Street. Stocks well off their session lows, though, but it is a down day nonetheless. Let's head right over to the first word breaking news desk for today's afternoon call. Here he is, Bill Maloney. And good afternoon, Charlie. U.S. stocks are plunging today amid the spreading coronavirus. Dow's currently down 840 points, was down over 1,000. S&P's dropped 93, while the Nasdaq falls by 3.1%. Fang stocks are down 4.5%, and the U.S. 10-year-old dropped to 1.37%. Gold is trading off the highs, still up 15. Small caps sank 27 points, and all of the main 11 S&P sectors are trading lower, led by losses in energy, tech, and consumer discretionary. Nasdaq Biotech's dropped 2.4%. Transports are down 380 points. Semi sink 3.9%, and the VIX is higher by 40%. In the Dow, only Verizon traded higher, while UNH, American Express, and Cisco led to the downside. In other news, Norwegian Cruise, American Airlines, and Carnival each fell 8% on the virus fears. And wrapping things up into it, Palo Alto Networks and Shake Shack, I'll report after the bell. 
Live from the First of Breaking News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Charlie? Okay, I thank you very much, Bill Maloney. And just a reminder, we've got complete coverage of what's happening with U.S. markets. Our next market update, 12 minutes from now, right here on Bloomberg. To hear live breaking news over your Bloomberg, type Squawk, S-Q-U-A-W-K, on your terminal. I'm Charlie Pallett, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Yes, indeed, Charlie. Thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Carol Masser in our New York Interactive Broker Studio. Jason Kelly out there in our L.A. Bureau. Now, the coronavirus, it has spread to more than 30 countries. South Korea reporting a jump in infections and Italy locking down an area of 50,000 people near Milan. And yet the most reported cases and deaths still in China, which has many asking questions about the state of health care in China. Andy Brown is Bloomberg New Economy Editorial Director. He has seen it firsthand and he writes about it uh, this week. He joins us in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. Andy, you have seen it firsthand years ago and also have an idea of what's going on uh, currently. So give us some perspective. Is it better than it used to be? Is it still not great? So the Chinese healthcare system is in crisis. Uh, it was in crisis even before the coronavirus hit. And the coronavirus has exacerbated all of the strains and tensions in the system and in some places stretched the system to breaking point. And that is a big political problem for the regime. Well, and Andy, you know, one of the things you point out in your column is these structural problems with the Chinese medical system, you know, right down to there's a shortage of general practitioners, you know, the the sort of doctor that you need on an ongoing basis. Help us understand some of what's underneath this. Yeah, so if to, 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 to wind back a little further, you know, the, the legitimacy and credibility of the Chinese Communist Party has long rested to quite some considerable extent on its boast that it, uh, it nursed back to health the sick man of Asia, as China was once called. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the most visible representation of that sickness was disease and poverty. Um, And in the early years of the communist regime, they had a system of armies of barefoot doctors who went out and fought infectious diseases and fought very successfully. Uh, Infant mortality went down, life expectancy rose. And then in the 1980s, the system collapsed. And the big problem now is that you don't have those general practitioners who stand really at the front lines of preventative health care. So when people in China get sick, Mm -hmm. they go straight to the hospital, which often means it's too late or the disease has progressed to the point where it requires heavy and expensive intervention. And big sickness, even though now 95% of the population of China has some form of health care coverage, nevertheless, being big sickness, as people in China call cancer, stroke, and so on, can ruin a family and often does. So what does it mean in a case like with the virus in terms of how people deal with it and China's ability to contain it? Well, it means that the, the I mean, to go to a Chinese, you have to, it's, it's, to, to, to see it is to believe it. I mean, mm-hmm. the chaos that is a, you know, the, the Chinese emergency ward in, in big cities with people from all over the countryside, you know, flooding in because the, ho- the best hospitals, of course, are in the big cities and right. there are very few good hospitals in rural areas. So everybody piles into Beijing, Shanghai, Wuhan, all of these big cities. And so the hospital system is already completely overwhelmed. What's happening now in Wuhan is that people with other sicknesses, not coronaviruses, aren't getting treatment. And this is causing huge amounts of public anxiety out and, and outrage. This is literally life and death. You know, Andy, you have a great anecdote in your story, a very heartwarming anecdote in many ways, especially for uh, us journalists about the power of journalism. And, and you know, very briefly, you writing a story about this uh, child who uh, was being treated for leukemia, basically couldn't afford it. Outpouring of donations come from all over the world, including the United States. You tie that back to what is now quite a fractious relationship, uh, to say the least. We've talked to you so many times about this between the U.S. and China and between China and other countries in the world. This decoupling that we've seen that is economic in some ways, but it extends beyond that in the case of this virus. Help us understand the context there. 
Yeah, so I wrote about this kid with leukemia, seven years old, in the Beijing Children's Hospital. His mother was camped out in the waiting room, uh, paying off the bill, which is pretty much a full-time job. Mm. Dad was back home in Inner Mongolia, selling off all of the family's possessions until there was nothing left to sell. Parents uh, end up going to see a doctor in the Beijing Children's Hospital. I was in the room, and she said to the both of them, she said, you've been very foolish, you've blown through all of your life savings, and now your son is going to die. Mm. And so they went into to the emergency care ward, picked up their son, walked out, and I wrote a, a story about this, for, uh, which appeared on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. And donations came flooding in. I mean, it touched the hearts of so many thousands and thousands of readers. Of course, it, with the newspaper, we couldn't take donations, but a hospital very kindly set up a, a charity to, to channel these these uh, these donations. Um, and I was reflecting on you know the kindness of particularly American donors to cure the save the life of this young child and comparing and contrasting now with this coronavirus is which has you know yet again exacerbated the differences between the u.s and china where now china accuses the united states of spreading panic of overreacting with the travel ban right and so instead of collaborating on what is a global health care challenge this is driving the u.s and china even further apart yeah just one more thing right after so many other things between trade and other issues. Um, Andy Brown, thank you so much. Always appreciate it. Andy Brown, Editorial Director at Bloomberg New Economy in our interactive broker studio. Coming up, folks, we'll get the chart of the day with our Bloomberg Stocks Editor, Dave Wilson, and then going to take a look uh, at the markets as we head towards the closing bell. We're off our lows of this session, but Randy Watts will be back with us. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stocks remain sharply lower in the final hour, though the market has reversed some of its earlier losses. Coronavirus fears are driving buyers from the market, though Jack Manley at J.P. Morgan says those fears may be getting ahead of reality. There is a lot of contagion fear right now. But when we look at the underlying data here, it still suggests that roughly 98, 99 percent of these cases are still in China. Yes, we've spread to 30 countries, but handfuls of isolated incidents. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 836, the S&P 500 down 91, the Nasdaq Composite down 292. Apple will likely face lingering supply chain disruptions due to the coronavirus. A Wedbush analyst says it will probably take more than a month for full production to resume. Apple is down more than 3%. In a break with history, Netflix says it will begin listing its most popular shows and movies. The list will be updated daily. Larry Kofsky, Bloomberg Radio. Hi, everyone. Al Roker here. As a guy with his own catchphrase... I appreciate that after 75 years, Smokey's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But I'm filling in because there's a lot more to report. Like when it's dry or windy. Be careful burning yard waste, because wildfires can even start in your neck of the woods. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Ah, finally another commercial, said no one ever. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade now and get over 45 commercial free music stations. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim. 
or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Uh, block, Cook into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. And to finish what I started to get my diploma. Just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Experts like to be part of Bloomberg Surveillance. What does the new Europe look like for the same reason we're recommending it to you? Everything you thought would happen is happening. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 130 to Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 99. Boston. Bloomberg 106. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Well, Carol, whether you're in New York or Los Angeles, you definitely care about housing and the housing crisis of long ago and the recession, maybe even the housing crisis of now, and yet a window into the housing market chart of the day. Yep, looking forward to that one. Dave Wilson will be along in just a moment. In the meantime, let's get you caught up on your top business stories and an update on the trade today and the sell-off. Here he is once again, Charlie Bell. Hi, uh, thank you very much. And we have got uh, just about 28 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell here. Steep losses. Let's get right to the numbers. I'll tell you the why in just a moment. S&P down 97, a drop there of 2.9% at 30. 40. The Dow wiping out its year-to-date gains. The Dow is down 900 points as I speak. And that is a drop of 3.1%. At the worst level of the day, have been down more than 1,000 points. The NASDAQ Composite Index down 311 points, a decline now of 3.2%. Equities tumbling alongside stocks in Europe and Asia as authorities struggle to keep the coronavirus from spreading more widely outside of China. In the meantime, yes, a steep sell-off, but a quick survey by Bloomberg News of 10 sell-side and buy-side traders and portfolio managers finds little sense of panic. However, a lot of people asking the question, what happened to have the selling intensify both Friday and today? Stuart Kaiser is head of equity derivatives at UBS Securities. The Apple News last week uh, caught people, I think, a little bit wrong-footed. And the reason I say that is because most people expected this to be a very sharp V-shaped recovery. <clears throat> and the Apple 
you know, the, the speed with which they were willing to cut or, you know, say we're going to miss our guidance basically in less than two weeks. I think people say, wait yeah. a second, is this going to be a deeper pullback or perhaps right. a more pronounced pullback than I expected if a company of that size is willing to move their guidance that quickly? He was interviewed this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance. Apple shares tumbling now by 4%. We've got the tenure up 28, 30 seconds, the old 1.375%. Travel stocks being hit hard today. Marriott International down 5.3%. Hilton, for example, down 4.8%. Hyatt shares, they are tumbling by 5.9%. Gold rallying 9 tenths of 1%. 16.57 the ounce. West Texas Intermediate Crude down 3.7%. 51.43 a barrel. I'll have another market update coming up in just about 12 minutes from now. The S&P again down 94, a drop of 2.8%. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Charlie, thanks a lot. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week live in New York and Los Angeles. This is Bloomberg. I should know who this is, but I don't. Is this... Uh... I don't know. Help me out here. It's one, of the, it's one of the hair bands from the 80s. You are correct. Right? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. David, At yeah. one point, they signed a contract that they would never tour again, and they're touring again. Uh, is it ACDC? No. Is it, it would be uh, Motley Crue. Oh. Uh, Motley Crue. And, you know, you're Phoenix, out there yes. in L.A., Jason. That's their I home know. base. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't. don't walk the streets and expect people to respect your musical knowledge, but hey, I digress. <laughs> Nobody walks the streets Ooh. in L.A. We're all in cars. That's true. It's a little chilly in here all of a sudden. Yes, um, indeed. So, get that to your chart of the day. Home sweet home. Uh, it's all yes. about home builders, you know, building product makers, housing-related stocks of all kinds. Now, you know, they're down today with the rest of the market. They're not down as much as the S&P 500, though, and which makes sense because, you know, you've got interest rates coming down, and that would suggest lower mortgage rates, cheaper for people to buy homes. So you'd think they'd do relatively well, relatively in this case, meaning smaller declines. But really, in a sense, you know, as of last week, these kinds of shares are back to square one, as my chart put it. They've gotten past the losses, pretty extreme in a lot of cases, that resulted from the housing market's collapse in 2007, 2008. And the way that you can measure that is to look not only at stock indexes, but also exchange traded funds, specifically the iShares U.S. Home Construction ETF. Uh, broke a record on Tuesday that had stood since the fund debuted back in May 2006. And the ticker on that one is ITB. And actually, there's another one, the Spider S&P Homeowners ETF, the ticker there, XHB. That's what I was just looking at. Which has been setting records since mid-January and did so twice last week. And then you have an S&P index focusing specifically on the home builders, whether they be in the S&P 500 uh, or indexes of smaller companies. And that one uh, closed above a peak earlier this month that had stood since July 2005, which is really before, you know, the housing market started unraveling. So you can argue that at this point, at least, that investors in these stocks, you know, if they were there at the peak, They've at least made back their losses. And, hey, there are some people will tell you that, you know, bull markets really don't start until that happens. So it'll be curious to see where the industry goes from here. If you want to know more about what I'm talking about, folks, send me an email. I'll get you the chart. The explanation goes with it and everything I do going so, forward. The email address is dwilson at Bloomberg.net. That's D. Wilson at Bloomberg.net. So your point is they're now just at the levels that they were prior to the sell-off, right, heading into the crisis. Exactly. For the most part, right? So, so then, you know, they're kind of back to square one. Correct. So, if so there you have it. So now they can start building, perhaps, right? Perhaps. I mean, that's good. Building. 
You like that, right? Yeah. There like you go. See building. what I did there? I see, see what, what you did, did there? there. Yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. It's, All really, right, so it's a cool chart, though. Like, if you go back to, right, you have to go back to 2005, right, where you saw that. And then, of course, the dip heading into the crisis, which we didn't all see right away until we were kind of smack into it. Yeah. And I mentioned 2006 in the context of yeah. that one ETF, the iShares ETF, when it was introduced. The other one, the Spider ETF, also started in 2006. So as these exchange traded funds were whirling out, you already had a housing market that was starting to unravel. Doesn't yeah. it always happen that way, Jason, right? It's like everybody starts to like kind of jump on board. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does seem to be. I mean, look, we're seeing a, a, a trade sort of like that related to this virus today in terms of people jumping on board, uh, as it were. I mean, it's been really something to watch. I mean, they're off, the stocks are off their lows. We're going to talk a lot more about this. But, I mean, there is a sentiment trade going on for sure. It's come up time and time again So, uh, in, every, in every guest that we've talked to. Dave Wilson, thank you so much. We'll talk to you right after the close for your stock of the day. Meanwhile, Carol, we're going to get the drive to the close. Randy Watts. He's going to be there with you in New York City. Always a thoughtful conversation with him and uh, a lot to get to as we try and make sense of what went on today. Right. And he shared some research, um, you know, kind of heading into this. So I'm curious to see if today's trade impacts any of that. I do want to point out uh, we're off our lows of the session, but still uh, down about 3% or more on each of those major equity averages. The NASDAQ taking the biggest hit on a percentage basis. That average down about 3.3% down, 300 18 points. But again, just got about 20 minutes left in today's session. So we will count you down to that closing bell, as Jason mentioned. Also watch for some of the movers. And don't forget, we've got HP earnings after the closing bell. In the meantime, back to World of National News headlines and back to Bob Moon. Hi, Bob. Hi, Carol. The true Hollywood story of Harvey Weinstein is far from the image that he and PR promoters carefully cultivated for the public as he was mistreating women for decades. So says the prosecutor in hailing a New York jury's guilty verdict verdicts today on two counts for sexual assault in 2006 and rape in the third degree in 2013. Weinstein is still insisting he's innocent, as defense attorney Arthur Idala told reporters. When the verdict came in, Mr. Weinstein was shocked, but stoic at the same time. He didn't react emotionally. There was no crying or anything like that. All he kept saying over and over again was, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. How could this happen in America? But Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance says the prosecution, with heroic help from his victims, proved he was actually a monster. Weinstein is a vicious, serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. Today, he said, they were finally heard. Weinstein was ordered to be immediately taken to jail. The widow of Kobe Bryant has sued the owner of the helicopter that crashed in fog and killed her husband and her 13-year-old daughter last month. The wrongful death lawsuit filed by Vanessa Bryant claims the pilot was careless and negligent by flying in cloudy conditions January 26 and should have aborted the flight. Pirate, uh, pilot uh, Era Zobayan was among the nine people killed in the crash. The lawsuit suit was filed as a public memorial service for the basketball legend is being held at the arena where Bryant played most of his career, Staples Center. 20,000 tickets were issued for the event. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. I'm Bob Moon. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment 